I think you were singing on a different verse. <laughs> I'm used to singing by memory. And, and <laughs> so, anyhow, fuck up. for those of us that started out before dark there, but uh, if we're able to get up and come to God's house, then we're blessed today. So if you have your Bibles and it's Sunday night and you're in church, so I'll assume you do, turn to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. As always, we ask to understand your prayers tonight. But if you find your place, Luke chapter 5, and we want to start reading at the 27th verse. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 27. Scripture says, And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, why do, you, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And we'd ask you if you would uh, to pray. Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you above all for Christ. And Lord, we thank you for your precious word. And Lord, once again, just take us out of the way, uh, put the words in our mouth that need said, and Father, let uh, let all those that are here tonight uh, gain some understanding, and Father, get a little closer with you, Lord. We just ask, if there be an eater burden, that it be brought to you. And again, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask all these things in Christ's name, and amen. Amen. He came not for the good, but for those that need help. He came not for the good, but for those that need help. And we see here uh, the calling of Matthew, or Levi, as he's called in, in Luke here. Uh, and Levi, or Matthew, was a publican. Okay, he was a tax collector. He was not somebody that would have been uh, highly sought after to follow Christ, okay, even the other disciples and Joe, it wasn't like that they were uh, biblical scholars, they were fishermen, they were uh, just simple tradesmen, simple men, uh, but they themselves looked down on Matthew because he was a tax collector. In other words, he had sold out his own people, okay? If you were a tax collector, you worked for the Roman government, and you kept the percentage of the taxes that were collected. So he was robbing his own people. And here Christ stops by and says, come and follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And it said that uh, Matthew made him a great supper and that there were publicans and sinners at his house that were eating. And again, the self-righteous, okay, the scribes and the Pharisees says, what, what does he do? eating with uh, publicans and sinners. And Jesus answering said that they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Listen, it, it does no use for a doctor to go and make a house call to someone that's healthy, Becky, when uh, the lady in the house two doors down can't get out of bed, okay? That's the one that needs the help is the one that's sick. 
And that's what Christ says. Listen, I didn't come for those that are whole. I didn't come for those that are healthy. I didn't come for those that are good. I come for those that needed help. He said, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So I don't come to call the good. I come for those that need help. And folks, listen, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you need help tonight. Amen. You need help. Amen. Okay? Doesn't matter how good everybody else thinks you are. Doesn't matter how good your family thinks you are. Doesn't matter good how, how your neighbors think you are. Your friends. Okay, listen. Uh, folks, there are a lot of people, they have millions and millions of followers on social media, Joe. But if God ain't following you, <laughs> it really don't do any good. Okay? If God isn't on your side, then what does it matter if the whole world agrees with you? But he come to, to help those that needed help, okay? And he didn't come to praise the righteous, okay? He, he didn't come and say, listen, I'm going to exalt all those that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And sometimes, Glenn, they're, they're, there's church people <laughs> that, that would, they get this idea that, you know, listen, uh, we ought to be lifted up because uh, we're the ones that are in church. That that isn't why he come, okay? Uh, John tells us in uh, John chapter 1, around verse 29, said the next day he, he uh, behold the, the uh, Son of Man coming unto him. He behold Jesus coming unto him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And holy, that was his only job in coming was to take away the sin of the world. It wasn't to lift up Peter. It wasn't to lift up James and John. It wasn't to lift up the rabbis, the Pharisees that existed at that time. It was to take away the sin of the world. And folks, that job hasn't changed. 2,000 years later, Harley, still the same job, to take away the sin of the world. Listen, it doesn't matter whether he lifts Doug up. Doesn't matter whether he lifts Prince Ridge Church up. Doesn't matter whether he lifts you up tonight. His job is to save those that are lost. Amen. That's what he said. Listen, I come to seek and to save those that are lost. Okay? <laughs> Folks, if you're found, <laughs> then guess what, Mary? We're safe. Mm -hmm. We're not wandering. But that's the problem. There are those that are wandering tonight. And that's who he's seeking to save is those that are lost. Okay? And again, he, he didn't come for the, for the godly. He didn't come for the godly. And the reason is because there wasn't any. There wasn't any. Okay? Uh, again, and I know this is kind of reviewed. This is the third time you all probably heard this today. Okay? But uh, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? Uh, Mary, it's not that we look down our noses on those that don't come out here to Pinch Ridge. It's not that we look down on our noses of those that aren't McClunds or uh, uh, Jarrett's or Anderson's or uh, Webb's or whatever. All the people that we know, Joe. But all have sinned. Mm -hmm. All have sinned. Okay? And come short of the glory of God. Uh, Romans 3.10, somewhere around there, he says, There is none righteous, no, not one. None righteous, no, not one. Folks, even David. Even a man after God's own heart needed saved. He needed a relationship with God. And folks, listen, whether it's Old Testament, whether it's New Testament, whether it's friend, neighbor, relative, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's why all need to be saved. Okay? And here's the thing. Uh... Again, back in Romans chapter 5, he says, For in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen, folks, if he waited until you got cleaned up, then hardly he'd be waiting for some people a long time. Because there's people that they still haven't got cleaned up. And they, they don't understand that, listen, 
It's not like your oven. It's not self-cleaning. Christ has to come and clean you up. Listen, if Christ hadn't come and cleaned you up, you're still dirty. You're still dirty. Uh, Isaiah 118, he says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Well, folks, if he can make something that clean, then guess what? It had to be really dirty. It had to be really dirty, okay? And I know all of you that are moms, uh, you've yelled at your kids in times past, okay? Because they have went out and they've ran through the mud holes and they've uh, crawled in stuff that we won't talk about crawling in, in here, okay? And that, that, that's the point. Listen, you don't want your kid coming in and dirtying up your house. Okay. You don't want them coming in and dirtying up the couch. You don't want them coming in and dirtying up the bed or whatever. Listen, folks, Christ is the same way. He doesn't want you coming in and dirtying up the rest of your life. He wants you to be clean. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can be clean is through his blood. Amen. Okay? His blood is the only thing that's going to make us clean. But he come not for the, the godly, but for the ungodly, okay? And folks, a lot of people don't understand this, and especially those that, uh, Joe, that they haven't been raised in church, okay? Well, well listen, uh, you don't understand my situation. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm going through. Listen, folks, he even come for the legends, okay? He even come for the legends, Okay? Uh, Doug, you mean he had to clean you up? Yeah. You all didn't know I was a legend, did you? <laughs> but Mary, Brother Hubert, had to clean Brother Hubert up. Billy Graham had to clean Billy Graham up. Okay? Folks, the Apostle Paul, arguably the greatest Christian of all time, okay, <laughs> uh, in, in 1 Timothy 1.16, he says, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now consider that. That is the Apostle Paul saying that, folks. He said, listen, uh, don't uh, look at all that I've accomplished. Don't. Th this is a man that wrote half of the New Testament, Glenna. Half of the New Testament, okay? He, he evangelized half the world, okay? Again, you look at all the journeys he made, Joe. Literally, he brought the gospel to most of the known world at that time. Okay? But he says, listen, uh, Christ didn't come and pat me on the back. He said, he come to save me because guess what? Of all sinners, I am chief. Okay? Again, not I was chief. <laughs> not I used to be chief. But he says, I am chief. Listen, folks. From the day that you're saved, do you think that you stopped needing God at that point? Paul realized this, that you know what? Yeah, Lord, you, you cleaned me up on the way to Damascus, but guess what? Every day since then, I've needed you. Every day since then, I've needed you to clean me, to keep me strengthened. Folks, if he does that for legends, then guess what? He has to do it for you and me. He has to do it for you and me. He comes for those that need help, okay? And repentance is needed by all. Mm -hmm. Repentance is needed by all, okay? We get it in our heads sometimes that, you know, uh, I went to school with old Billy Bob, and, you know, uh, Mary Jane's my cousin, and uh, what that folks, garbage. Repentance is needed by all, okay? I hate to break that to you. Uh, Luke chapter 13 said that there were those that come and told him of uh, the, uh, the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And that Christ said, do you think that they were sinners above all Galileans? He said, nay, but unless ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. That's what he's telling to those people that are talking to him, Joe. He said, listen, uh, you all have this idea that they were the worst people, but guess what? If you don't repent... You're in the same boat that you're going to perish, okay? Or he said, uh, those upon whom the tower in Siloam fell, do you think that those 18 were above all sinners in Jerusalem? 
And again, he says, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Folks, listen, it don't matter if you've been brought up in church. It don't matter if you have good mommy and daddy. Unless you repent, you're going to perish, okay? The same as the murderer, the same as the pedophile, the same as the rapist, the same as the adulterer. Folks, again, there's no categories of sin. Sin is sin, okay? Whether you kill one man or whether you kill 20 men, you're still a murderer, okay? Whether you commit adultery once or whether you commit adultery 15 times, you're still an adulterer, okay? Whether you tell a little white lie or whether you tell a big whopper, listen, folks, there's no difference. There are people... And I don't try to bring politics into this, but let's, there are people with this attitude, Harley, that, you know, uh, Donald Trump is, is the biggest liar of all time, and he may well be, <laughs> but guess what? He's no different than you and me. He's no different than you. And guess what? Joe Biden may be the biggest liar of all time, Luke, but he's no different than you and me. Once we have sinned, we've sinned. And there has to be a, an atonement for that sin. And that atonement has to be through Christ. He said, listen, that's why I come, was to save the world from sin. Okay? But he come for the helpless. He come for the helpless. Uh, again, sticking in Luke, around chapter 15, I think. Another instance where he's uh, dining with publicans and sinners. Okay? And again, the Pharisees are all hot and bothered. And he asks them, he says, which man of you, if you had a hundred sheep and lost one of them, would he not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go and search for the one that was lost until he found it? And then when he found it, he said, you know what he would do? He would take it and lay it upon his shoulders and carry it home rejoicing. And he would tell his friends and neighbors, said, rejoice with me for my sheep that was lost is now found. Folks, again, he didn't show up at church, whether it's Finch Ridge or any other church today, Joe, to pat people on the back. He showed up, Cheryl, in case that some of the lost sheep happened to wander by. Mm -hmm. And folks, there are a lot of lost sheep today. There are a lot of lost sheep. There are those that have never been in the fold, and there are those that uh, hardly, they've just turned their back. Now, amen or ouch, there ain't no other way to say it. Listen, they've turned their back on the rest of the flock. They've turned their back on the shepherd. And there are some people that, you know what, they get angry and say, well, fine, the devil with them. Go. Now, folks, listen, I've said this before. Listen, come to church, don't come to church. <laughs> Becky, that's not going to affect Doug, okay? Whether you all come or whether you don't come, I'll still be here. Okay, again, that's that Joshua 24, 15. Okay, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, okay, I can't speak for everybody else's house, Mary. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Amen. Okay? But uh, again, there are those that would just say the devil with them. will have nothing to do with them. But that's not what the shepherd does. The shepherd said, listen, I'll leave the 90 and 9. <laughs> I'll leave those that are in the fold because they're in the place of safety. Because it's the one that's lost, Mary, that it's out in the wilderness. It's helpless. It's defenseless. Folks, you, you, you all know what sheep are, right? <laughs> okay? They're not like uh, these big-horned uh, elk <laughs> that can just knock everything out of their way. They're, they're peaceful, docile animals. And Harley, they don't put up a fight, okay? It don't take a very big dog. It don't take a very big coyote to kill a sheep. Because you know what? It's just going to lay over and die. And, and that's what people don't understand. Listen, folks, there are lost sheep that are just rolling over and dying. Because they've left the fold. 
But that's what Christ says. He says, listen, I, I'm concerned about the lost sheep. It's not the found ones that I'm worrying about, saying. I'm worried about those that are lost. And listen, he says, I'll go and I'll search until I find them and I'll put them on my shoulders. I won't drag them home. But if you're that weak, if you're that helpless, then that's what the Savior does. He says, listen, I'll put you on my shoulders and I'll carry you. You all probably have that footprints bookmark in your Bible, a lot of you. The guy, he, he has the dream, and uh, at the hardest points in his life, there's just one set of footprints. And he says, Lord, well, where were you then? I was carrying you. I was carrying you. Folks, a lot of people don't understand that. Listen, there are times when God puts you on his shoulders, and he carries you through these weak points. He carries you through these dark paths. Because that's what he come for those that needed help. He come for those that needed help. And he's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. Listen, uh, there are people, again, that uh, they're respecter of persons, okay? Listen, I don't like the Baptist. I don't like the Methodist. I don't like the Pinch Ridgers, okay? Old Becky, that we could get everybody to say, I don't like the pinch ridgers, because you know what? That means we're doing something right. <laughs> if everybody else hates you, that means you're doing something right, okay? But God is no respecter of person. In Acts chapter 10, he sends Peter to Cornelius, okay? A Roman centurion. A Roman centurion. He works, Joe, for the people that took his master and hung him up on there after they had nearly beat him to death after they had dragged him through the street, after they had whipped his back raw. This is who God says, listen, you go to Cornelius' house. And most of us would probably be like Peter. Now, wait a minute, Lord. <laughs> you want me to go where? You want me to go to who? Harley, I can't imagine God's like me. When, when I say stuff at home to my wife or kids and they question, I say, did I stutter? <laughs> Folks, listen, God does that too. <laughs> did I stutter? I told you to go to Cornelius' house, okay? And when he gets to Cornelius' house, he figures out why. He figures out why. Because Cornelius wanted to be saved. He knew that he was lost. He knew that he had a need. And the Lord says, listen, Peter, you're the one to help him. But you got to go. You got to put all these past uh, biases out the window. And folks, that's the way that we got to do. We got to put all these past biases out the window. Okay. Just because somebody didn't go to church where we go, just because they're not from the same neck of the woods that we are. Folks, there are those that are hurting. There are those that are lost and they need a Peter to come visit them. Okay, they need a Philip to come visit them again. A, a couple chapters back from that, he tells Philip, "said Listen, go down towards Gaza." In other words, he's on the way towards Egypt, Harley. And and uh, again, Philip could have said, "Well, listen, it's kind of comfortable here, <laughs> where I know everybody, where where I know everything that's going on." Okay, I know everything that's going on in the neighborhood. All right, but he says, "You go down towards Gaza." And he finds the Ethiopian eunuch on the road there. And he, he's reading the scripture, but Joe, he doesn't understand. <laughs> and finally it clicks with Philip. Hey, that's why I'm here, to help those that need help. And he comes up to him and says, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I unless some man help me? And, and he reads again where he's at, and it says that uh, Philip started that, that scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Preached unto him Jesus, Glenn. Not preached Doug McClellan doctrine. Not preached Pinch Ridge doctrine. Not preached uh, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist doctrine. But he preached unto him Jesus. Folks, he came to help those that needed help. Uh, John chapter 4. Again, the woman at the well. This Samaritan woman. Nobody else would have stopped and talked to her, Becky. Okay, listen, this half-breed that uh, we would just as soon walk a mile out of the way that we wouldn't even have to see her, much less speak to her, but yet Christ sits here and talks with this woman. 
and says, listen, I, give me a cup of water and well, what are you doing talking to me? He said, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, you would be asking me for water and I would give you living water. Okay. And again, uh, she's like, well, why are you bothering to talk to me as mayor? And he says, go get your husband. Okay. Now, Harley, it wasn't because he needed her husband's approval. He knew that she didn't have a husband. Okay. That's what he told her. He said, listen, uh, you've had five husbands, and the one that you're with now isn't even your husband. And again, this woman is amazed. How does this man know all these things? And again, why would he bother stop and talk to me? Folks, have you ever considered that? Why did Christ bother and stop for you one night? Amen. Why did Christ bother and stop for you one day? Because you needed help. Because Doug needed help. Okay, listen. I pray that you come the way that I did, not because there was anything special about it, but Joe, because we was nine years old. We spared ourselves a lot of pain. We spared ourselves a lot of heartache. There are those that have lived a whole lifetime that have let a whole lot of damage go under the bridge that hardly, they didn't have to. Again, not, not, not be saved because that's the way Doug was saved, but folks, come as early and as quickly as you can because that's how much more time you have to live for God. That's how much more time you have to let God use you to help other people. But God's no respecter of persons. Man is a respecter of persons, okay? Again, whatever it is, okay, they're, they're the wrong skin color. They're the wrong race, okay? They're the wrong uh, sex, folks. We take for granted, Becky, that a woman in this country has freedoms that women in other parts of the world don't. Women in other parts of the world they're not even allowed to show their face. They're not allowed to have a job. They're not allowed to do this or that. And Joe, heaven forbid, if they actually come into church, <laughs> because guess what? They wouldn't be asked to sing. They wouldn't be asked to read. They wouldn't be asked to pray. But God's no respecter of persons. Regardless of race, regardless of sex, regardless of creed, regardless of... Uh, Church affiliation, he says, just come unto me and I will give you rest. Come unto me and I'll help. But you got to come. That's the thing. You got to come. But here's the good thing. If you come, there's no difference. There's no difference. Okay. There's no difference between the salvation that Doug found that night in May of 1979 and that you found whatever day that, that you were saved. Okay. No difference. Well, Doug, that's your opinion. No, that's scripture again. Okay. Folks, again, uh, we, you all learned that Doug lays the trap, right? We don't come to the gunfight without bullets, Luke. Okay. If we tell you something, it's because we can prove it with scripture. Romans chapter 10, uh, around verse 12, 13, somewhere in there. Said, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No difference between the Jew and the Greek. What does that mean? <laughs> Harley, he was good to Abraham. <laughs> he was good to Isaac. He was good to Jacob. He was good to David. You know who else he was good to? <laughs> Ruth. You realize that David's grandma was a Moabite? She wasn't a Jew. <laughs> she wasn't a Jew. But she come back with Naomi, her mother-in-law. And God didn't say, okay, hey, sorry, you're not in the club. <laughs> You'll have to leave. But Mary, through her, David descends. Okay. Folks, he was good to Naaman. Naaman was a sworn enemy of the Israelites, Joe. A captain of the host of Syria. He had killed Israelites. 
Okay. When they come and told Elisha that this naming character wants healed, Elisha could have looked and said, not my problem. Not my problem. I don't have anything to do with heathens. But he tells him how to be healed, Harley. In the New Testament, okay? Again, he's good to Paul, a Jew. He, he describes himself as a, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. That There was no one that was more schooled and more uh, by the book, according to the law, than, than Paul, okay? But do you know one of his uh, protégés, Timothy? There's two books that are written to Timothy. Do you realize that Timothy's father was a Greek? His mother was a Jew. His father was a Greek. There were Jews that would have had nothing to do with him back then because he was a half-breed. But Paul takes this young man, Timothy, and not only trains him and molds him, but Timothy becomes the pastor at Ephesus. Because God's no respecter of persons. Because he helps those that need help. What if he had said, Timothy, I can't help you. You're not one of us. You're not one of us. And folks, there are a lot of churches, Joe, that that's how they've approached visitors. Listen, you're not one of us. Glad you're interested, but we're not taking applications at this time. <laughs> That's sad, Cheryl. There's a lot of churches like that. But folks, the church of the living God, he's always taking applications. He's always taking new members. All you got to do is come. Just like Matthew. It said Matthew left all, rose up, and followed him. That's what you got to do, folks. You got to leave all that in the seat. Get up and follow Christ. If you can do that, you can be saved. But he come for those that needed help. Folks, do you all need help tonight? Get us a song, uh, whoever's leading. <laughs> and folks, as we stand, if you have a need, if you just want to pray tonight, <coughs> we'd ask you to come. Page 88. 88. Sounds like a good one. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in friend we have in Jesus. Amen. But folks, a friend don't do any good <laughs> if you don't talk to them. A friend don't do any good if you're not around them. Okay? There are a lot of people that claim to be friends, but uh, 
Shannon, I don't see them. I don't see them. And folks, if they treat you that way, how are they treating Christ? But what a friend we have in Jesus. But you got to take advantage of it. God, take advantage of it. All right. All hearts and minds free. Uh, announcements. Wednesday night be prayer meeting. Children's church and youth group. 7 o'clock. So everybody remember that. Uh, again, the uh, business meeting will be May 1st. If you have any questions about uh, voting eligibility or eligibility to hold office, those are back on the back on the bulletin board. Or if you got a question, you can ask me. You can ask one of the rest of the business committee. Any other announcements? Again, appreciate everybody being out. I know you're tired because I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. But folks, a long day for us is nothing to what a long day was for Christ. Amen. Amen. Mary, he was kept up all night, beaten all day. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, again, the, they put him on the cross at the sixth hour. You know what that was? High noon. High noon. So that means hardly he hung in the hottest part of the day. So when we all complain about having to mow the yard in that, that heat, imagine hanging on the cross for three hours in the middle of the day. But folks, he did that for you. He did it for me. All right. Again, appreciate everybody being out tonight. Nothing else. Glenna, this Mississippi Lord.